Welcome to the Lynette Zhang YouTube channel, where we support community and sound money globally. And remember, if you don't hold it, you don't own it. Today, I'm so excited to tell you that my very good friend, Greg Manorino, came to visit with us today. And we talked about so many things. If you're not watching his channel, you need to go watch it. One of the big things that we talked about was how the central banks control us and take over more and more and coerce us into cooperation. We have a choice on that and we discussed that as well. We talked about so many things. Please, you're gonna enjoy this conversation. Okay, you know what I really wanna talk about with you? Is you said that central banks, their power is to raise debt and that we are in a debt death spiral. Will you talk yes. more about that? I mean, I agree with you 100%. I just want your perspective on that. You know, essentially, in my perspective, um, and what we've witnessed here, uh, well, since the inception of central banking, is uh, is an interesting phenomenon here. They have increased their strength all over the world by devaluing the currency, uh, by creating more debt, slaves to their system, not just individual slaves, but nation slaves, Mm -hmm. uh, to uh, to their system. They have one product. Their product is debt. That's the only product that they have. And the more debt that they issue to the world, the stronger they become, not the weaker. And unfortunately, I mean, this is the situation is, I mean, it's amazing. We're watching today global debt skyrocket at its fastest pace ever in history. And no one is sitting back and saying what's going on here. Oh. It's, it, it, it blows my mind on, a, on an epic scale. I'm like, okay, People, maybe they don't know. I'll be honest with you. Uh, if it weren't for shows like yours, uh, people might not know anything that's happening here. It's really the truth. Yeah. But, um, I mean, if people would sit back and ask themselves just one simple question, that is, let's see, we have a world economy that is being destroyed. At the same time, we are seeing global debt skyrocketed. What's going on here and who's responsible for it? I mean, it's that simple. Um, but but again, in, in my view... It's the propaganda ministry, again, it's the CNBCs, it's the Fox business, it's the Bloombergs, it's the Reuters, it's all of these who are keeping people's eyes off the ball with, with you know, look here, don't look here, uh, the propaganda, that's all we get. I tell people all the time, the two greatest uh, export products of the United States are, well, we export our, our, our debt to the world, inflation to the world. Um, and we also export propaganda to the world. So I guess it's multifaceted, but they're all kind of connected. Um, and unfortunately, people have no idea what's happening to them or why. I had a guy write to me this morning because uh, I, I, I despise central banking probably more than anyone on this planet. Maybe not you. I don't know how, yeah. how, how you will loathe it. But uh, I really feel that these they're the enemy of the highest order. And it, it's, it's astonishing to me how you have this mechanism in place where they, you know, they're on the side of angels. They're the ones who have created this worldwide problem of inflation and skyrocketing debt. And we're supposed to trust that they are the same entities that are going to fix the problem. No, in no way, shape or form. It's, you know, you know, I'll tell you something. I, I speak about this all the time. Uh, we have all been sold a farce on a truly m magnificent scale. That is, let's see, by central banks, we'll talk about the Fed here, Yep. incrementally raising the federal funds rate uh, uh, over a given period of time, all of a sudden a miracle was going to happen and inflation was going to disappear, you know, because it was transitory and it was temporary. Right. But, you know, none of this, you know, people like you and me have nailed this to the wall since day one. Telling people this is a lie. It doesn't work. It's never meant to work. And in the background, what these institutions are doing is continuing to inflate. Again, it's unbelievable. And but people again are locked into some kind of I don't know what it is uh, mentality that the system is uh, it's not working, but it works for them, and eventually they're going to somehow get it together, and this is just going to miraculously go away. No such thing. This whole thing, as you and I have outlined for years, years and years, uh, is deteriorating faster than we've ever seen. I don't even me who all I do is study this stuff, and I talk about it all the time, as you know, as you do too, would have never believed that we would be in the spot where we are now. But I can promise people that are listening to this, we haven't seen anything yet. And I mean anything. 
This is just the opening act of this whole entire thing crumbling apart piece by piece. And if people aren't ready from every standpoint and perspective, but what's about to come, and most people are not, I mean, most, 95% have no clue as to where this is going. They don't even know who their enemy is. Again, they're being told this, that, and the other thing, distracted by this, deceived by that. If they really knew who their real enemy was, and that, in my view, is, again, the central banks of the world were working together here to destroy the global economy, to bring the consumer to their knees, only to issue in a new system for which they're going to make us beg. They're going to make us beg for it. Uh, People have no idea. None, but that's where we're going, and there is no doubt about it. What kind of power does that new system give them, right? I, I mean, believe generation, gonna, if we allow it, they just get stronger, right? Way stronger. They, they, they're trying to, and I've been using this word a lot, to extort more control out of everything. They want what? Central banks have had only a couple of goals here, and they've been working methodically toward them for, for over a century now. We're talking about they have wanted to make both the lenders and buyers of the last resort to take over the world by, by uh, of, of course, having full control over the monetary system, which includes uh, the economies of the world, which includes the financial markets of the world, the entire financial system. Once they have that and they do... Well, we all lose. And that's another message I've been telling people. We cannot be free. We cannot be a free people if we have to live under the rulership of these institutions. We, they have to go. And unfortunately, it would take a worldwide wide revolution and a lot of pain and suffering to make this happen. I'm not calling for a violent revolution, okay? So the powers that be want to listen to me. I think there's a smart way to go about doing this again. Look, if we understand... That I know I'm getting a little crazy here, but my blood pressure is boiling. I can feel it right now. If we understand that a central bank's power resides in their ability to inflate, if we can take that power away, if we can prevent one central bank, let's say the Federal Reserve, from issuing one single dollar of more debt, the entire central bank's banking system comes down. That's their only power. But again, you've got our politicians, you've got... You know, everyone else working for these institutions to pull more cash into that because they all know where this is going. They understand that the system, it, it, you know, it's it's a weird paradox. It seems like it's debt saturated. OK, we would all say that, you know, global debt is skyrocketing. But the fact of the matter is we are in a full blown debt crisis, which means we are actually in a liquidity crisis. There's not enough yeah. debt, even though we are awash in it. The system demands, demands, demands that more debt be pulled into the now in greater and greater amounts just to sustain where we are. It can't remain static. It can't remain linear. It must grow exponentially. And this is what people have no idea about at all who are outside the financial world realm. They have no clue, and they're going to pay for it all. It's being set up that way, unfortunately. And uh, I, I mean, look, I urge people to do their own research on this. Don't listen to a thing I'm saying. All right. Does Greg make sense at all if i do great if i don't think about maybe why it doesn't make sense to you because this is just so simple to understand it really it's so simple it's like it's hiding in plain sight but there are people that say we're going to have a debt jubilee what do you think about that well what people don't understand is being that the system is debt based it, we can't have any kind of a jubilee there's no such thing as a free lunch here you got this don't even get me started on Biden right now. I don't know what your perspective is, but I don't like the man, okay? And it's not that he's pulling the strings at all. We, these are puppets, okay? The central banks would become the government of the world here. But what he's doing here by so-called, uh, you know, debt relief is he's devaluing the degrees. Um, in other words, let's say, okay, look, I'm getting my, my student loan debt relief. Oh, what a great man Biden is. But at the same time, what he's doing here is devaluing the greed and nothing. That debt is, in, the student debt doesn't go away. It is immediately added to the national debt. So we all pay for it. Again, no free lunches here. But at the same time, what he's doing is he's taking these people's degrees, which they have worked for and earned, which makes them valuable. I'm not making them valueless which means, value less, which means that now for the rest of their entire life, they are guaranteed to earn less money. That's really what's happening here. People don't understand. It drives me crazy to think about it. 
But uh, but again, look, I, I think people like you and me, and there's a lot of other ones who have been out here for a while, try and raise the alarm, explain to people what's happening in a, in a way they can understand it. Because yes. people think this is really compli complicated. It's not complicated. Yeah. It's 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 interesting because, and to me, um, you, you as well, to understand how the system works at its core, understanding how cash moves through the system in predictable ways, and understanding just a few dynamics lets us all be able to stay ahead of the curve on this. Mm -hmm. um, period. The end. I think that's uh, that's where we're at. Well, have you noticed the spike in the monetary velocity? Yeah. Well, look, that's another thing that we need to talk about too. So you're, you're talking about money velocity, right? Yeah. We were at historic lows for a very, very long time. Now, you know, what, what, eventually, what's going to happen, in my view, okay, is a massive tsunami of cash is going to eventually start to move. We're already starting to see it, and this is why we're getting inflation as well. It's, but people don't understand with regard to how, again, another facet to how the financial markets work is what we do know is since the meltdown of 2008 and when the Fed jumped in here with quantitative easing one, moving on to quantitative easing two, and then Operation Twist and creating all this cash out of, out of, out of, out of thin air, adding it to a digital screen, it takes a, a finite amount of time, which is kind of unpredictable, for that for all those extra bills in whatever form they exist to make its way through the system. I mean, we had when we had a, a incredibly low um, money velocity, if we weren't seeing inflation because again the cash wasn't moving through the system yet. Now we're starting to see it turn around a little bit. So now we're seeing this inflation develop, and we have with regard to that, they can't stop it. There is no way to stop all of these extra bills that have been issued by central banks around the world here. Uh, in whatever form they exist to, to chase the same, or in this case, a lesser amount of goods moving forward. So they can lie to people all they want and say, okay, we're raising rates. It's going to make a difference. It hasn't made any difference, and it's not going to. As again, I think we're going to hit a new phase of where central banks are about to step in here. And uh, again, look, it's no... Well, people, another thing that people need to pay attention to here is we have the Fed repo. I call it a scam. You know how this works. Fed passing around vast amounts of cash back and forth between institutions. They've been tapering this down for quite a while. Is there any coincidence, not a coincidence to me, that at the same time they're tapering that this, it's, a, it's tricking the system into thinking that it's more liquid by passing vast amounts of cash back and forth between institutions. Now that liquidity, because they're pulling it, we're seeing war expand at the same time. I right. don't believe in coincidences here. Yeah. That is happening. It is deliberate, and it's not going to stop either. It's going to go on and on and on, uh, and of course, it's going to be quite. Well, how about this? How you know, just talking about this. That this is a headline just from today. Uh, yeah. How's this one here? Can you read that? Ooh. The U.S. and its allies face a ten trillion dollar reckoning in the race to rearm. Yeah. Right, war is a great excuse to inflate, isn't it? Of Depart course it is. Of course it is. And then they're going to use this whole no other thing to whether or whether or not the Fed's going to cut rates. The Fed, this is another way for them to inflate. And people, I've been, I've had, I've heard arguments on both sides here. I understand the argument: raise rates, cut rates, uh, or or don't do anything, but. The reason why the Fed wants to cut rates, and they're not, not on any kind of, uh, they're not data dependent. They're on a fixed path here. June, July, probably June, we're going to see this because it allows them to add digits to a screen and buy more debt. What people don't understand is in order for a central bank to lower rates, how do they do it? Do they just wave a magic wand? Do What do they do to make it? They have to get into the market. They have to get into the market and make it happen. So it gives them yet another avenue to play. Right. They have to go out of the bonds. But, you know, I think it's really interesting. Much as the Fed has talked about uh, tightening, the financial conditions are extremely loose, and they've never really gotten tightened. So mm -hmm. I don't know why they're so shocked that employment is as robust as it is. And why things, you know, if you listen to them, they'll say, well, this hasn't happened before. Yes, it has happened before, just in different currency iterations. And everything that I'm saying, including the war, is an indication that we're at the end. And these are distractions. So excuse to print money, but also distraction. Look over here. Now you have an enemy over here. So you're not looking at us as the enemy. Of course. I mean, that's that's 
the mechanism they've all used since forever now. It's not going to stop because they have people exactly where they want them. You know, it's these people versus these people. They're creating hatred. They're creating strife. Uh, they're, they're pointing at who our enemies are. And we, we already know who our actual enemy is, and it's the central banks and our so-called loving, caring politicians who are in their back pocket here. Uh, and I've been telling people for the longest time, we have no representation. And when you're absolutely right here, I think, well, well, what this is building up to is a climax, a climax where this is all going to come to a head, and it's not by accident at all. This is deliberate. Everything we're seeing, people are being pushed off of a cliff in every way that they can be. We got, we got household debt, personal debt, consumer debt at record highs. People continuing to borrow beyond their eyeballs. Uh, a phenomenon that was pretty in, pretty easy to see. Prime members of the middle class who can't make it. So what they're doing is trying to borrow the way into prosperity, which can't possibly happen. And in my own neighborhood here, you know, I just moved here. Brand new houses. People just moving in. They can't afford them. They're starting to sell these houses already. Some of them haven't even been here a year. They're going to be selling these at a loss because they're competing with the builder. It's a, it's a darn shame what we're seeing here. And these people, my neighbors aren't poor. These are people that are generally kind of well off over here, and they're feeling the pinch too. Um, so it, it's it's really bad. And I, I don't I know I'm preaching to the choir here, you and your and your your followers here, but um, I hope they're ready. I really do. Well, you know, it's food, water, energy security, barterability, wealth preservation, community, which has been definitely huge, huge one. Well, you just nailed this huge. We are not each other's enemies. Get together with like-minded people. You know that's why. I, Personally, my, my little, I live in a cul-de-sac here. They're all the greatest people. We're all friends. We all get together. And again, in a, in, in a uh, we'll watch each other's houses, for example. You know, I could rely on these people, I think. And most of these people here, they're not dumb. My neighbors, I've talked to them about this and they're all like on the same page. So I couldn't be happier to be living where I am because these people get it. Most people, as you know, they walk through time and space, not, not knowing how to walk and chew gum at the same time. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, when you throw any of this stuff at them, they, they have no clue at all. They don't understand what's going on. And that's, of course, part of the mechanism is to keep people confused, um, you know, cause them to hate each other and everything else here. They control their minds. It's a psyop on an unprecedented scale. Yeah. Well, you know, when they were setting up the system, one of the things that they said, because I read it in their documents, is that if we inflate away the value of the money, people are going to have to work more. And when they're working more, they don't have as much time to pay attention to what we're doing. I Isn't mean, that the truth? But, Isn't you know, there's the something truth? that I've been witnessing that have started. And I wanted to get your opinion on this, because after the global financial crisis, which I believe is when the system died, 2008, we then... The heroin, it's on, been on a drip since, a heroin drip. Well, heroin drip, but also central banks working together in a, in a synchronized, coordinated way. We did have mm -hmm. a surprise in 2015, so central banks know. But what I've been watching lately is like Switzerland just lowered their rates, right? Mexico yeah. lowered the rates last month, but now their inflation is coming up again. So instead of the synchronized mechanism that we're seeing, we're actually seeing differences in some countries and evolved nations no, actually, it would be the third world nations uh, that are raising rates, others that are lowering rates. So they're, it's like this, they're no longer synchronized. I mean, basically, that's my point. Mm -hmm. And the system is a, as vulnerable it is, as it is with the liquidity like you've been talking about. To me, this looks like a potential accident in the making. Good. Have you, well, notice that that shift that's recently happened i, I wouldn't expect I, I would you know with the with the third world nation of course i would expect them to be kind of outside the realm of what we're going to see like with the swiss national bank i believe we're going to soon see the european central bank and the fed start to do what they always do that is work in lockstep here to continue to destroy their economies to continue to destroy the people to continue to inflate, to continue to extort more control out of them. And then, of course, you know, then you got the whole BRICS nations here, uh, right. which, uh, you know, we know what they're trying to do. And who could blame them for uh, trying to sidestep the dollar at this point here? Again, we're, we're exporting our inflation to them via the U.S. dollars, still being the world reserve, at least for now. Uh, and, of course, extorting propaganda. And, and what drives me crazy is they're calling this, they're going to have a name for it. The anti-American axis. That when I first heard that, 
I was like, whoa, that's exactly the wording axis that they used during World War II. They're already setting this up here. And I, I, uh, I unfortunately believe that we are, we are, I think World War III has already started. Yeah. And I think this is, unfortunately, a lot more people are, are going to die. And what I think, unfortunately, people don't realize is what this is going to come down to at its core, eventually, is a resource problem. They're already talking about it, scarcity. And, uh, and this is something I've, I've talked about for a very long time. Eventually, we are going to see... Um, People, there's going to be pandemonium in the streets. Again, we're going to end up, we're going to end up in a, with, a, with a credit freeze here, a, a, the system locking up. That's what was the real problem last time during the meltdown, as you know. It wasn't really about the stock market. It was about the credit markets locking up. And what did the Fed do? They jumped in here, capital injections into the system to try to free up the credit markets. Into business lending had stopped pretty much here. If it had gone on even another day or so. Um, people would have not been able to access cash in the banks. The ATM cards wouldn't work. Debit cards wouldn't work. Credit cards wouldn't have worked. Credit of any kind would have, wouldn't have worked. So I think what they're leading us toward to here uh, is, is a, a shutting down of the entire system. They're going to point fingers at the, the BRICS nations or, or Russia or whoever they are. They're the enemy. They're the ones that cause the problem because it can't be the central banks here again. But again, these central banks, absolutely, they're working in tandem right now, the big ones here. Uh, with, with the third world countries, we'll see. When we got Zimbabwe now backing their dollar with gold, you know, you would be. It's not surprising to be backing their currency with gold. I wouldn't be surprised to see more of that. But in the grand scheme of things, you know, um, unfortunately, we're going to see the, the central banks now take their next their next steps here to to bring the world to their knees. And that means, of course, unfortunately, more war, more death, more pain, more suffering. And people are just they're being they they're blind. They don't see what's happening to them. They're unable to see it. Again, like you said, they must work more. They have they don't have the time to study this stuff. Um, this is why I urge people who are listening to this share it. Get this stuff out there. Um, if we can change one person's life today by this by this interview here, this, this talk we're having, then we 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 we've, we've done a positive thing. Um, we got to try to, to, to kick this up a notch here, really. We really, really do. People like you and me, we got about the same amount of followers, about a quarter of a million, right? Well, Which, I, did, I did an ITM. Yeah. I, well, I'm asking people to really help me rebuild this. But it's we got to rebuild this because, look, this is they're not going to find this information anywhere, mm -hmm. anywhere else. You know, see, so you and me, we are so much alike, it's scary. We see the things that, because yeah. we see what's happening. People that have an understanding of what's going on, the markets, how cash moves through the markets, the economy, it's easy. But most people have no idea. They just want to be disconnected from it. And they can't study it because, again, they're forced to work two and a half jobs or three jobs or whatever it might be. My, one of my best friends is working two full-time jobs just to make ends meet. He's got three kids. It's, he's like a former member of the middle class. He had to take on not just a part-time job, but two full-time jobs. And he's my age. This isn't easy for a guy to do at this age. It's crazy. But that's what people are being forced to do. Absolutely. because And and it's all, well, do you think it's all by design? I mean, do you think, because they want us to think that they're, that the central banks are about helping the public. But I I really think the central banks are about preserving themselves and the bank. Yeah. Is. I mean, that's their goal, to survive and thrive off of all of us. You know, people think, just talk about a government, and I believe the government here is the Federal Reserve. I think central banks are the governments of the world. People believe that it is the job of the government to help them survive. That's not the truth. Their job is for them to survive, not for you, and they will suck it right out of you if they have to. And that's exactly, this is all by design. Everything we're seeing is by design. There's not a thing that comes along anywhere on the political spectrum or anywhere else here, the financial system that is not already thought about, tested in some back room somewhere. Okay, this is what we're going to do now. But you see, I think it goes even further than that. I believe that what we are living in is a side effect of something that's been planned a century ago. As, as central banks work towards their goal here to be the lenders and buyers of last resort, to own it all here, to continue to issue their product to the world. So we have to live in their system. What are they doing? They're creating slaves to their system. Why are they doing that? More dependency on the system means that when they decide to issue in their new system, we are going to have people, again, on their knees begging for these same institutions that have done this for a solution. They got it covered. Unfortunately, but people like you and me, and I believe this with my whole heart, we're making a difference, a positive difference in the world. Because look, I'm not being paid 
to say the things I'm saying, and neither are you. We're sitting here discussing what we believe is real, and I want people to make up their own minds here and and think, hey, you know what? This makes sense to me. This is what is happening. Well, maybe it's not. Let 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 us know if we're on target here. I guarantee you, the ninety percent of the people that are listening to this are going to go, this they're on target. Oh, absolutely. I wanted to go back to to Zimbabwe though, because quite honestly. It's fascinating watching this roll out. When a little bit more than a year ago, they came out with the one ounce gold coin. Can the general public afford a one ounce gold coin? <laughs> I'm sorry I'm laughing. I'm sorry I'm laughing, but you're right. right. Then they came out with a gold backed CBDC, but you couldn't convert it into the physical gold. So the population went, nah. Now they've come out with, and it's only a couple days old, so it's going to be fascinating to see with this gold back currency. But, you know, I really dug in. I could not find out what that other basket of currency is in it. So they've sort of, they've sort of done it uh, based on like the IMS SDR currency, which is a mm -hmm. basket of a bunch of currencies. Mm -hmm. I couldn't find out which currencies are in that basket. I couldn't mm -hmm. find out what percentage of that was in gold and it's mm -hmm. definitely not convertible. And I couldn't find out the, I could find out the conversion rate of the U S dollar to the new Zimbabwe gold, which is what they're calling it. Mm -hmm. uh, but I couldn't find yet. I'm, I'm, I'm looking more, but I couldn't find yet what all the old Zimbabwe dollars in the banking system that we're going to convert into the new Zig Zimbabwe gold. I couldn't, mm -hmm couldn't find what that conversion ratio was. Yeah. It, is it, it is so interesting. You know, look, again, people hear, uh, uh, they see a, a headline and all of a sudden, oh, this is the greatest thing to happen. But without looking into it as you did, I didn't look into this stuff. But I, I don't think, it, I don't care what they do. First of all, they can't back it 100% by gold. They never will. It'll be maybe a, if, if we were to ever, see a commodity back currency, it would be a fraction of a fraction of a fraction. Because again, understanding that a central bank's power is their ability to issue debt, they're never going to let it happen, a major central bank. They right. to keep that control. They got to keep their power. And that's how they do it, by issuing more debt. They can't allow a commodity back, at least fully back. Right. But it's also, a, a, a you know, it's a con game, right? It's always a con game. The scam on an epic scale. Totally. And so when you look at, Zim I think Zimbabwe is such a great case for us all to be paying attention to because they're showing us what our government is going to be doing in the future, right? What they're trying to do is regain public confidence. But all of the years that they've had of hyperinflation and abusing the public, the public has lost all confidence. I, I think the biggest tool that the central banks have and they're losing is public confidence. Because as long as the public thinks that they're on their side and they know what they're doing and blah, 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 then you continue to use that money. But what happens is when the public loses, and that's the last message of confidence that we have in this system that's holding it together. When that's gone, how do you get that confidence back? And that's what Zimbabwe is showing us is that even when you say that it's gold backed, the public doesn't trust it. And I don't think they're going to trust this new money either, but I could be wrong. No, I, I don't think you're wrong. I think this whole thing where people don't understand it, it's a con game from the get go. Fiat or so let it be here. The system only functions because people believe it will. It's, it's backed by nothing. Well, some people do say that the dollar is backed by the war machine and oil, although that's fallen off of a cliff. Right. Um, but 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 again, what they're doing, in my opinion, especially with the Federal Reserve and the, the so-called developed nations around the world, is they're looking for scapegoats. They're going to blame scarcity of whatever on this situation or on this nation. They're going to blame a meltdown of the system. They're going to say, look, if they have to, I don't put anything past them, but they have to stage, let's say, a nuclear event here, which would, of course, I think we send shockwaves around the world and destroy the financial system as current form here, only to issue, oh, let's look what happened over here. Well, it, it, nothing, in my view, is past what they will do to maintain power. So, 
Again, they're already setting up the scapegoats. They're setting up whoever they can blame for the, the current demi the demise. Well, the system is currently in its death throes. I think oh, we're pretty is. much seeing that here. Yeah. Um, but then, again, they need to set that up. Um, and and I, I think although we're really close to seeing this whole thing uh, eventually come to an end in the new system, they're not done, especially with the presidential selection cycle coming up here, in my view. But 25 may be a game changer. I just, I don't know, I kind of uh, listen to my own intuition a lot here. And I, I feel like like 24, I had said this was going to be the year for war. We were going to see all these la these people being laid off by the, the tens of thousands. It's something we, it's, it's epic what's going on here. But I think 25... Maybe the time here where we really see things to change. So people need to start, uh, you know, uh, getting on the right side of this. Now, with regard to the trusting of the system, people who follow our work, they realize that that they're, this these they're the most corrupt, evil institutions on the face of the earth. The, these central banks here, but most people they don't have a clue. They don't know at all. Again, you watch the pro the the programs or the tell live vision out there. You know, the, the, the distortions of the truth, the non-reality is that people fall into that kind of a trap. So the, I think we're unfortunately, I wish, going back to how many followers that we have, we should have 10 times, 100 times the people that we have. But there, you see, if you and I were to go out eating Tide Pods or looking toilet bowls, we would have millions of followers. But because you and I are sitting out here telling people the truth, we become their enemy. Okay. Um you want to make an enemy, you tell them the truth. They don't want to hear it. They can't handle the truth. You know, Jack Nicholson. Um, I think what it comes down to is that people have just been so conditioned to be lied to yes. since they take their first breath that once they hear the truth, they can't, they don't know what's going on. Again, they li they're living in a distorted reality. When you put try to put them into reality, they hate your guts for it. Um, and, and this is something I think both of us have probably had dealt with for a long time with the trolls and then this and then that. But that's how you know you're over the target when you're getting flack. And I love it. When I when I talk about something and I get, see all these negative comments, I'm like, good job, Greg. You're over the target. You know, that's how it is. But anyway, we got this down. And we're taking care of the people that trust us, you and me. We're taking care of them. And I think that's huge, okay? I tell people, look, um, you know, I want to make a positive difference in the world, and we all can do that. I think one person has the ability to change the world. Imagine what we can do together if we actually came together here. Again, they won't allow it, but our communities, the ones that you and I have created, are bringing people together, like-minded people together. We'll make, look, it's it's slow, but we're doing it. We're making, we, we've been out here a long time, you and me, a long time. And uh, it's finally paying off. But again, I wish we do had we had more people following our work because then we really could make a difference. So urge to people, share this stuff. Get it out there. Share, share, share. And also I wanted to go back to the revolution part because I think we can have a peaceful revolution if people just move into sound money, physical gold, physical silver, and enough of us on a global basis actually do that. There, there's your revolution. Because and that that's also there are more of us than there are of them. If we can get enough people to position into it, maybe this is my battle. We will have a voice at the table in this new monetary iteration. I don't know whether or not we will, but I'm going to die trying. I'm telling you right now, that's my. You know, it, you know, it, it, it's astonishing to me to know how few people actually hold physical gold and silver. Um, they, it, it's, it's a fraction of the population that, that holds this stuff. Mm -hmm. And if more people, I mean, if everyone just went out there and just bought a little of it, you know, I understand that even one ounce of gold may be a little difficult for people here, but how about an ounce of silver? You know what I mean? How about, yeah, you know, look at this beautiful stuff. Isn't this beautiful? That stuff. Exactly. <laughs> silver. It's 92 and a half percent pure. It's monetary at its base. In any form at all, right? Well, hopefully, hopefully, people will hear this stuff, understand it, and realize that they need to bet against the debt, become their own central banks. I've been telling people that for ten years here. Hold hard assets. I think right now people need to gain exposure to commodities in general. Yeah, this risk on environment is going to turn risk off. Risk off means cash is just going to move from one set of assets into another. Super suppressed things: gold, silver, platinum, and palladium as well, even copper. 
I think is I have a little copper here by the way. <laughs> um, you know, all, all this kind of stuff is it's all good. I, I think cash is going to leave the debt market's going to bleed out, hemorrhage out hemorrhage. on an epic scale. And we just got a warning from from Jamie Dimon, none other than him talking about a spiking in rates. This was just yesterday or the day before. It's kind of astonishing, but they have to tell the truth sometimes. These big wig CEOs, they got to say, you know, I told you, you know, a spiking, uh, a, a massive sell off in the debt market is going to happen. It's just a, it's a ticking time bomb. That's going to put so much pressure on world stock markets. People aren't going to know what the heads are going to spin around like the freaking exorcist. Cash is just going to move into other assets as in like, like, like a tsunami. But they got to be ready for it now. Don't wait till the last minute. Start, you know, adding to your positions of physical assets, gold, especially silver, in my view, is the most undivided asset of them all. But look, we're doing our best that we can. And I think we're doing a heck of a job, you and me, um, trying to set the people on, at, straight and putting them on the right pathway. Right. And I think part of what I'm really impressed with and happy to hear is that you're really creating that local community in your cul-de-sac because that's where it really has to start. And, you know, with different skill sets, different assets that you have, you know, you can come together to weather this storm. I, I don't know. Are you doing any growing or are you doing anything in that area? Because if I, not I haven't yet, but I have people, really good friends of mine that are, and that's important too, obviously. You know, you need to, we need that. So you can't be reliant on these, uh, going to these stores. Because in the, in the event of a, let's say a, 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 an engineered, because it will be, of course, a, a national emergency. First thing, you're going to shut down this. The stores will be cleaned out in five minutes. Exactly. Good. Water. Oh, they'll be gone. Good. So, you know, you got to have access to oh. that. I definitely have to prepare more from that perspective. That's the truth. The I always have a space in my bug out house for you. I will thank tell you. you. I appreciate it. There. I might, I might need that. <laughs> Well, you might, and uh, you know, I've been, I was just up there last weekend and oh my gosh, the, the orchard that I put in, in the spring is all in blossom. I'm going to have so much fruit. I think it'll be even too much to process, but we'll have a lot to share, but yeah, that's awesome. You know, yeah. We're going to take care of each other period of the end. Uh, absolutely. But, but I tell people too, go to the farmer's market. Meet your local food purveyors, the growers, the guys that, that do cheese, the guys that do meat, you know, and get to know them and, hey, give them a day on the farm so that when push comes to shove, you're going to still be able to get the food to feed your family. I like that. That's a great idea. Yep. It, it's, it's local. And that's really what I use silver for. You know, when, when push comes to shove for a gallon of gas, whatever's local food, whatever, then I'm going to be able to more than likely buy it with silver because that's recognized. Um, but yeah, we, we have to really come together in a local community and in a global community everywhere by gold and silver. That's the revolution and it's peaceful. Yep. And that I'm hoping can buy us a seat at the table because we'll be able to say no. If you have everything that you need and they want you to do something, pretty easy for you to say no. If you're is, all dependent on them and they want you to do something, pretty hard to say no. There you go. Now, is there anything else that you feel that people need to be aware of at this point in time? Any indicators of maybe you know, because you are big into the markets, do you see the melt up happening? Is there something, is there some kind of technical thing that you're seeing happening right now that people might need to be aware of? Well, I, you know, look, uh, I always look at the markets themselves, uh, the stock market as a derivative as was hap of what's happening in the, the debt market. So keep watching the debt market. The uh, we've, be, we've seen an interesting sell off here lately in the debt market, 10 year yields rising. I don't think it's going to last yet. They're not done maintaining the illusion, at least through the presidential selection cycle. We'll see what happens after that. But um, that's kind of what I look at, you know, every day. Like, I, I was fixated on the Dow Jones Industrial Average because that's what CNBC wants you to look at. Me, Greg, you're looking at what the 10-year yield is doing. I look at the dollar on a relative rate basis. I have this set up in a nice little equation called the MMRI, Manorino Market Risk Indicator. It's free, 100%. Everyone who wants it, right on my website, traderschoice.net, top of the second page. Take advantage of these things. Risk is where it's at, and risk is at a very high level right now. 
uh, we're only very, we'll be at extreme risk relatively soon. Doesn't mean the market's going to crash at that point. But again, watching action in the debt market will dictate where the stock market is going to eventually go. Debt market is a time bomb. It's going to go off. Don't listen to Greg Manamito. Listen to Jamie Dimon. As you said, we're going to get a big problem, a big problem in the debt market here. And you've got people like uh, Larry Fink from BlackRock warning about the same kind of thing, a meltdown in the debt market. It's incredible. They have to do that. They have to tell people these things. But again, understand oh, yeah. what you're doing and why you're doing it. Yep, exactly. And and then and I know and I really appreciate your time in here. But staying with the debt markets, we've now had the longest inverted yield curve in history. And they want us to think that that doesn't matter. The exactly. longest happened in the kickoff to this thing back in the 70s. So do you have an opinion on that? Does does the inverted yeah. yield curve this not is huge. It's a huge indicator. I mean, you know, look, they're trying to convince us that we're all rich and everything is fantastic. Okay. But the inverted yield curve invariably has, has, you know, look, I look at, not only do I look at the inverted yield curve, but I like to look at leading indicators here. Business uh, spending, for example. But what, what are businesses spending on themselves to grow? It's almost at zero. We're not seeing businesses invest in themselves. So a major leading indicator there too. But yes, uh, inverted yield curve throughout history, people look this up for yourselves, has preceded every single recession and depression. And they're trying to tell us everything is fine. It's not fine. Again, it's yeah. part of the distractions. And the fact that it's the longest inverted yield curve in history, I think tells us that what we have coming is going to be worse than it ever has in history. Way worse. Way, Way worse. Okay. Now, how can people find you? I'm easy to find. Google me. Go to my website, traderstress.net. I'm kind of everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you are. And we're very lucky for that. So, wow. Any last words? That's it. I think we covered a lot. We did cover a lot, but there's yeah. so much more. I mean, we could probably talk forever, <laughs> you and I. And we, we will soon. We have to do this in person. We will. That would be great. We will. Totally. People would love to see that. Oh, yes, they would. Yes, they would. But thank you so much for being here today. I know that our, my audience is very happy to see you. I've had people saying, when are you going to have them on? So I've had the same thing about you. Your people love you. You have seriously dedicated fans. Believe me. Uh, well, you know what? Just the one thing, well, we have many things in common, but one thing that we do is our commitment to our fans, to people that That's are- That's the truth. That's the truth, man. I, I'm telling you. And I feel a responsibility, as you do, to give these people actionable information, not just information. I don't want people sitting back sucking their thumbs here or, or want to be entertained. I want people to think about this stuff and take action. Don't sit back and do nothing because if you wait, it's going to be too late. Exactly. I mean, plan. if you fail to plan, you're planning to fail. And Heck, yeah, I love that. <laughs> it real, I, I, yes. I, I mean, that's just the truth. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for being here today. We, we don't want to take too much more time between visits. We just, no. We yeah, have, we'll get on that for sure. And I hope all of you got as much out of this interview as I did. Until next we speak, please. Make sure you give us a like, leave a comment, share, 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 and subscribe. Help us both just expand the subs on and, and more eyes. We need to get as many eyes on this topic as we can. So until next we meet, please be safe out there. Bye-bye.